you look at a forest, sometimes you can't see it for the trees. In cases like this, we need to suggest the basics of what we see. The painting you just saw me doing was quite large, but the steps to produce a painting are the same regardless of the size. So let's paint this painting again, but a little bit smaller, and I'll go into a little bit more depth on each one of the steps. We have supplied a photo of this scene that you can download along with the lesson plan. Just go to montmart.net. So where do we start? Well, initially I like to draw up a rough thumbnail sketch from the photo. And on this rough thumbnail sketch, I like to have colour notes and the steps that I'm going to take. I just feel that this helps me mentally prepare. You may have noticed at the start of the previous clip, I was slapping brown paint onto the canvas before I'd even started painting. Now that's called a tint. So for our first step, we need to tint the canvas. And to do that, I mix up burnt umber and yellow ochre in equal proportions onto my palette. As this is a fairly small project, I'm using the acrylic paint pack. And this comes with 12 colors and we apply it with our 50 mil brush. Just scrub on the color. Make sure the brush is nice and damp and ensure the covering is nice and even. Once that's dry, we can rough in the main elements. And I'm using a brown pastel pencil to do this. Refer to your PDF for guidance in this step. The drawing is quite simple, but take care with the trunk placement. The farthest ones will be smaller in circumference to convey the illusion of perspective. Now let's apply a bit of paint. So squeeze out some white, black and cobalt blue. This mix will be for the track. To apply the paint, I'm using the number 12 angle. I like to follow form and I am mindful of conveying the feeling of this tranquil, mysterious, windy trail. For the underpainting of the foliage, squeeze out some hooker's green, crimson, ultramarine and some yellow. Create a darker green by mixing the crimson red into the hooker's green and then lay it into the lower part of the canvas. I now create a green with a totally different hue from the ultramarine and the lemon yellow and blend this with the hooker's green. Rather than thoroughly mixing the two colours together, I like to blend as I go. The subtle colour undulation adds interest. Now, I know this looks a little bit funny. Why are you painting a green sky? Well, the blue will go over the green, but you'll see what I mean a little bit later. The other thing that I'm doing is as I'm moving up, I'm adding more yellow into the green to make it lighter. And I'm creating a light area around my focal point here. Now for the trees. Squeeze out a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow ochre. With these three colours, I can paint all the trees in slightly different tertiary hues. I'm laying the paint quite thickly on that gum. This will reinforce the impression that is close to the viewer. It is still in the underpainting stage, so I can be bold with paint application. Now let's add our whites. Again, vary the colour of each trunk. When you paint light over dark, it makes such a statement. I'm just dry brushing here. To do this, slightly load the brush and hold it very lightly. Alrighty then, now for the fun part. Let's add some texture. And we're going to do that with the trusty number four palette knife. And you do it like this. Scrape the knife over the palette at an angle so the edge is loaded with paint. Use that edge to apply the colour. It is not too precise, but that is the beauty of it. It lays down such a thick, rich layer. And that unpredictable application is synonymous with this painting tool. Add some white and keep it on the side facing the path. Mmm, lovely. Let's lay in the sky now and we'll continue with our palette knife because this lays in a really thick coat of paint. So we're just painting the negative areas. 
This is a mix of white and cobalt blue. Refer to your photo to see where the clusters of foliage lie. So I'm going to create my focal point now and I'm adding a little bit of white so it really stands out. Let us now put on the fine foliage. So we'll revert back to our angle brush for this. Squeeze out all your greens and apply the paint like this. Use the corner of the brush. This creates a nice leaf shape. I am laying in the hooker's green first, lightest to darkest. Now lighten the green. This is the ultramarine and lemon yellow mix. Pop some into the foliage while you're at it. It's looking fairly finished, but it all looks a little bit uniform to me and nature's not like that. So we're gonna try a little bit of spattering. So dampen your brush, dip it into some paint, and then just flick the paint on. So I'm using the handle of my palette knife because I feel it gives me more control of where the splatters were going instead of just flicking it onto the canvas. You can see it looks like grass, twigs and leaves. Well, there you go, my interpretation of a busy bush scene. Well, if you've just picked up one technique, then that's fantastic. I hope you enjoyed watching and remember, keep on painting. Mm -hmm.